If one is to consult the long line of possibilities as to what built the Earth, aliens should be in your top five. Theories of ancient aliens being attached to Stonehenge, the Rosetta Stone, hieroglyphs, and more are all over today's list, and time to show you why I'm a big believer. One of the never ending questions about Stonehenge is whether or not it contains hieroglyphics. And in 2015, a scientific paper was published by mathematician Dr. A. E. Zlobin in the form of a diary. So he discovered Egyptian hieroglyphs in Stonehenge and determined the site as the solar Egyptian temple of the god Atum. This theory is based on the fact that many other ancient sites, such as the pyramids of Egypt, are all decorated with hieroglyphics. So another theory suggests that the stones might have been used as a giant sundial, with the hieroglyphics acting as a way to record the movements of the sun. Now that theory is supported by the fact that Stonehenge is aligned with the movements of the sun and moon. Whatever the true purpose was, it's clear that the site was of great importance to the ancient people who built it. So speaking of that, who built that thing? Why did they build it? Naptaplea, as it is now known, isn't exactly accessible. It is believed that the stones are among the oldest astronomical alignments of megaliths in the world. So apparently they were built by this nomadic society in the early centuries. And it's possible they were built by an ancient civilization, maybe even one of non-human origins. If you look at the tomb, it was only filled with cattle bones, which is kind of weird. So my theory, and ergo why it made today's list, why it topped today's list actually, is that the anomalies point more towards alien advanced communication instead of isolated humans. Also once again, there haven't really been signs of human life, which supports my theory. And not to sound like a broken record, but if there's something I can't leave out, where there are hieroglyphs, there are things we as humans can't explain. So it only furthers my theory that one of the languages aliens can communicate in, and the reason they don't visit much more now compared to in history, well it's because they used hieroglyphs to communicate with. And now that it's not a regularly used form of communication, we don't know how to communicate with those folks anymore. Back to the history books we go. Stonehenge is thought to have been formed between the ancient Neolithic and Bronze Ages, while the pyramids are thought to have formed from the Iron Age. So if you need more precision, because I know, it's a lot of mumbo jumbo. Stonehenge is about 3100 years old, the pyramids are about 4500 years old, but still, well, it's all around the time we're using hieroglyphs, communicating with those from above. The City of Gods is a sprawling ancient city in Mexico that's best known for its pyramid temples and astronomical alignments. Hmm. Astronomy again, eh? Built more than 2,000 years ago, this age, size, and complexity of this entire area is otherworldly. Yes, some folks think it's the work of humans, but like, allow me to explain why it might be alien. Scientists suspect that over centuries, a mix of cultures, we're talking Mayan, Zapotec, Mixtec, all built the city that could house more than 100,000 people, with its murals, tools, transportation system, and evidence of advanced agricultural practices, it's often considered much more technologically developed than should have been possible in pre-Aztec Mexico. By far the most well known out of all the buildings is the massive Pyramid of the Sun. One of the largest such constructions in the Western Hemisphere, the Pyramid's curious alignment is believed to be based on the cycles of the calendar. And it's another one of the places on today's list that was crazily advanced for its time, leading folks to assume it was built by aliens, or at least with alien help. So I mentioned Stonehenge. A huge circle of stones, some weighing as much as 50 tons, sits in the English countryside outside of Salisbury. Known as Stonehenge, the Neolithic monument inspired Swiss author Eric von Doniken to suggest it was a model of the solar system that also functioned as an alien landing pad. After all, how else could those massive stones have ended up hundreds of miles from their home? Well, nobody knows what exactly the meaning of Stonehenge is. But as with everything else I'm mentioning today, could it be aliens? Scientists, yes, have demonstrated that it's actually possible to build such a thing using technologies that would have been available about 5,000 years ago when the earliest structures were built, but it's not looking super duper likely. One thing we know for sure, it appears as though the stones are aligned with solstices and eclipses, suggesting the Stonehenge builders were at least keeping an eye on the heavens. So it matches up with everything else, the lunar calendar, solstice, hieroglyphs. The Rosetta Stone is one of the most famous objects in the British Museum, and did you know that technically it's a broken part of a bigger stone slab? It has a message carved into it, written in three types of writing, that helped experts learn to read Egyptian hieroglyphs. Ah, my theory. The writing on the stone is an official message, called a decree. The decree was copied onto large stone slabs called stele, which were put in every temple in Egypt. And the Rosetta Stone is one of these copies. So not particularly important at the time, but remember when I mentioned three types of writing? Specifically, hieroglyphs used for priestly decrees, which 
Demotic, which was the cursive Egyptian script used for daily purposes, meaning language of the people, and ancient Greek, the language of the administration. The rulers of Egypt at this point, by the way, were uh, Greco-Macedonian after Alexander the Great's conquest. So after all that mumbo jumbo, here's where the aliens come in for me. What if they also provided a means of translation for alien species? What if whoever visited to help build the pyramids and the helicopter looking devices knew how to translate hieroglyphs, but not the other common dialects, and the boards also served as a helpful lexicon for them? Like I mentioned before, these decrees were every Everywhere in Egypt, providing ample source material. So when the Rosetta Stone was discovered, nobody knew how to read ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. But because the inscriptions say the same thing in three different scripts, and scholars could still read ancient Greek, the Rosetta Stone became a very valuable key to deciphering the hieroglyphs. Soon after the end of the 4th century AD, when hieroglyphs had kind of gone out of use, the knowledge of how to read and write them disappeared. In the early years of the 19th century, scholars were able to use the Greek inscription on this stone as, well, the little Google Translate, if you will. Thomas Young, an English physicist, was one of the first to show that some of the hieroglyphs on the Rosetta Stone wrote the sounds of a royal name. Yeah. You got me. French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion then realized that hieroglyphs recorded the sound of the Egyptian language. This laid the foundations of our knowledge of ancient Egyptian language and culture. Champollion made a crucial step in understanding ancient Egyptian writing when he identified the hieroglyphs that were used to write the names of non-Egyptian rulers. He inscribed this copy of the published paper with alphabetic hieroglyphs meaning a mon ami Dubois, my friend Dubois. Then he made a second crucial breakthrough, realizing that the alphabetic signs were used not only for foreign names, but also for Egyptian names. So together with his knowledge of the Coptic language, which derived from ancient Egyptian, this allowed him to begin reading hieroglyphic inscriptions fully. So after the stone was shipped to England in February of 1802, it was presented to the British Museum by George III in July of that year. And the Rosetta Stone and other sculptures were placed in temporary structures in the museum grounds because the uh, floors weren't strong enough for the weight of it. And this stone's been on display in the British Museum since 1802 too, with only one break. So hey, if you want to go see some uh, old alien stuff, I recommend it. And finally for today, depictions of modern craft found in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs have kind of been hailed as proof of time travel, and even that advanced alien civilization that I've been going on and on and on about today. So for folks like us, hieroglyphs appearing to resemble planes and helicopters and artwork done thousands of years ago are absolutely 100% proof that the ancient Egyptians were visited by beings who brought them advanced technology from the future. With a lot of folks who support this theory, such as myself, saying if the ancient civilization was putting helicopters and modern spacecraft in their artwork, then they must have seen them somewhere. If you're wondering where the name came from, helicopter hieroglyphs is given to the hieroglyph carving from the Temple of Siti I, which was interpreted as an out of place artifact depicting a helicopter and a lot of other examples of modern technology. The initial carving was made during the reign of Seti I and translates to he who repulses the nine enemies of Egypt. And as was done with a lot of carvings at the time, it was later filled in with plaster and recarved during a different reign with the title he who protects Egypt and overthrows the foreign countries. Over time, the plaster has eroded away leaving both inscriptions partially visible and creating a really interesting overlapping situation. As with all dates in ancient Egypt, the actual dates of reigns are unclear, but hey, it's still really neat. So these 3,000 year old hieroglyphs that were found in the temple are said to depict a helicopter, you've got a plane, and some other futuristic aircrafts. So if we're gonna go with the ancient aliens theory, which I've been talking about all day today, this is the theory that the advanced race who brought details of futuristic technology to the Egyptians, well, these were visitors from a far-flung, highly advanced planet, visiting to share their knowledge with the primitive communities here on Earth. Now, the beliefs also claim that these aliens were the ones behind pyramids, Stonehenge, other famous monuments. You've heard me say it already today, and I believe in it. And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly. See y'all next time you love the spooky people.